So this is the third Sunday in the month of February, and this month we are handling the topic, the law of two, and uh, we establish the fact that God has the principle of two operating on this earth. So he created everything twice. So no one is an island, no matter how gifted you are, and as believers, we are not left alone, but God in his own design created Jesus to be our partner, to be able to walk the good fight of faith as Christians. That is how come it is important for every believer to have a very stable, constant, and persistent relationship with Christ. Hallelujah. It is not a matter of just going to church. It's not a matter of just abiding by the religious precepts. It is about understanding the benefits of Christ to you as a believer. When you understand something, your idea, your approach, your understanding is different from when you are doing it without knowing the benefit that comes from it. So last week, we started the benefit of having Jesus as our partner on this earth. And we established the fact that to us, the only person on this earth through whom we can experience true love and true peace on earth is the gentleman called Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And through him, we have access and the opportunity to discover our identity on this earth. To discover our identity on this earth. So when you read John chapter 14, verse 1 to 4, he made us to understand that he is the true creator. And he is the one who can show us who the true creator. In other words, when we have fellowship with Christ, when we take Christ as our partner, he gives us access to know the true creator on this earth. Who we really are and who designed us and and for us to walk on this earth to say that we are seeking to fulfill something. We are seeking to achieve something on this earth. Who can connect us to our source that we are yearning for within us is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So Jesus is the one who will show us the way to the true creator. And he's also the one who will help us discover our true identity. Because he says he's the truth. He's what? The truth. So for you to know who you really are in the light of God's image, and word which he has written for our reflection to know that becomes the mirror through which we see him. Jesus is what? The truth and the life. So if we want to know our identity on this earth, it is very important to have this Jesus as our friend. Hallelujah. Amen. Then there are many noise around us, many distractions, but through his word, we know what is expected of us. And as we follow his word, we now discover ourselves by the power of his Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I want to move on today on the topic, so the benefit of having Jesus Christ as our true partner on this earth. Now, Jesus is our authority, and I take my word from 1 Peter 3.32. Jesus is our authority on this earth against every spiritual darkness or wickedness. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Let's open to First Peter chapter three, twenty-two. First Peter chapter three, verse twenty-two. I'll take it from eighteen. Okay. Christ suffered for our sins once for all time. He never sinned, but he died for sinners to bring you safe, safely home to God. He suffered physical death, but he was raised to life in the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. So we understand that Jesus came to die because of our sins. Now, the only approach to which the devil can get us is when we what? We disobey God, and that is sin. So if we have Jesus, the only man who has authority over sin because he came to obey the Father fully and now have access to the throne room of God and death on the cross, what happens? It means when we partner with this person, we know that our sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why it says there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because as long as you are in Christ, your sins have been forgiven. And as you continue to walk with him as a true partner, what happens is he helps us to renew ourselves from the sinful nature we have. Because in sin we were born, so everyone has this sinful nature that causes us to fall short before the true room of God. But when you have this partner, Jesus, in you and with you, he helps you to overcome those sinful natures gradually, gradually. And then a time comes, you realize that the sin that you were struggling in, now you have conquered it. You see it. Opportunity is even presented. And yet you say no to it because Christ has become your partner. That has helped you to overcome that sinful nature. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, Christ is our authority. against every spiritual wickedness. If you overcame Satan, when you read verse 19, it says, so he went and preached to the spirit in prison. When Jesus died physically, when he went to hell, he went to what? Preach to those who were in bondage. Hallelujah. Amen. Those who disobeyed God long ago, when God waited patiently while Noah was building his boat, only eight people were saved from drowning in that terrible flood. And that water is a picture of baptism, which now saves you not by removing death from your body, but as a response to God from clean conscience. Hallelujah. So we see... Christ in us helps us to overcome our sins through a clean conscience. His desire is to what? work on the cause of our sinful nature. And the cause of our sinful nature is what? The power of the mind which the enemy has to, what? to influence the body to sin. Hallelujah. So it is very important to realize that when we allow Christ to be our friend and we take him serious as our best friend, just continually have fellowship with him and be sincere with him about your sinful nature. And he helps you one day at a time, one day at a time. You keep falling along the way. But he says, I know and understand that you are met by a mortal human being. And I've come on this earth to know how the flesh can give up at a point when you are even yearning for an encounter with God. 
So don't worry, I understand you. All I need you is don't forsake me. Just hold on to your faith. I will continue to what? work on your conscience. I will continue to give you a clean conscience against that sinful nature so that when the time comes, you'll be clean from that sin. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So Jesus is our authority against what? Sin. That is how come you can't preach sin consciousness and think that when you let the people know that they are sinful, that will be a way for them to change from their sinful nature. No. You can't change by your own might. You have to understand the partnership we have with Christ, who helps us give us the right conscience to be renewed from our sins. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 22. Now Christ has gone to heaven. He is seated in the place of honor next to God. Hallelujah. Amen. If Christ is seated next to God, if you make this person your partner and your best friend in your work with God, then you rest assured that whatever you are trusting God for, he will give to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He will give to you. Hallelujah. Amen. So he said he's seated in the place of honor next to God and all the angels and authorities and powers accept his authority. Glory be to God. Amen. Even the angels and authorities and powers accept his authority. So the devil knows who Jesus is. That is how come when we a Christian is being afflicted, you don't run away from one place to the other. You stand in the authority of your friend and command his authority over the powers of darkness. And who is this friend? Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is how come we have to come to the point as believers to know this Jesus for ourselves. The benefit we have in him. So that when we are being afflicted, when the authors in our families are after us, we can say we have been redeemed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Christ in us is the hope of glory. Therefore, my blood is no more the blood of the, my lineage or my family lineage. Is now the universal church of God. My identity is now a Christian. No more the blood of my forefathers, of my fathers, of my great great forefathers. Because they went into covenant with a God that they thought could save them. But thank God for the truth. We have now come to encounter Christ. So we have to redeem ourselves from the covenant they made with the blood in our lineage. Hallelujah. Amen. We must come to that point to know our authority in Christ against spiritual darkness. When you dream and it's evil, you stand on your feet and declare the authority of God over that evil power that wants to come against you. When you are walking and you are sensing in your spirit something is going on, you exercise your authority in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. At your workplace, over your children, over your, your, your finance, over everything, every spiritual authority that wants to come in between you and this Christ, you cannot fight it by your own mind. You engage this friend, the greatest of all Christ God gave us to fight the good fight of faith against every spiritual authority. And look at it. When you read John chapter 16, verse 10, 23 to 24. Let's go there. John chapter 16, verse 23 to 24. Hallelujah. John 16, 23 to 24. At the time, you won't need to ask for anything. I tell you the truth. You will ask the Father directly, and 
deal with once you refresh because you use my name. Hallelujah. Amen. You haven't done this before. Ask using my name and you will receive. And you will have abundant joy. Amen. Hallelujah. So you see, when Jesus was living, <laughs> he gave us certain authority by which we can demonstrate his power. And that is all. It says, my name. Hallelujah. Say my name. My name. Say my name. My name. My name. My name. It says, so you have, at this time, you won't need to ask me for anything. So Jesus was telling me, a time is coming, you will not see me physically to ask me anything. Hey, this is the greatest of authority. You call it the power of attorney. He was telling them, a time will come. You will still see what I do, but not physically. But I give you something by which you can still do that. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, I tell you the truth. You ask the Father directly and you grant your request because you use my name. Hallelujah. Now it is all. His name. Hallelujah. His Amen. name. His name is our authority that he left for us. Yeah. That by the mention of the name Jesus, every knee will bow, every principality, authors of that, whoever they are, will bow. Because there is power in the name. That is the power of attorney has been known to us. If the, the, the ancestors mention, no, sometimes it's so funny how they do their thing. They mention the people in the family that have died. They call all of them their names and say, come and receive our prayer or whatever. Hey, people, mortals who lived and died, you are calling their names to pour libation that they should now hear your prayer. But we as believers, what we have, we have Christ. His name is our authority. If the gods are mentioning the names of human beings as a medium and the ancestors as a medium, Master, we look, we have an authority in the name of Jesus. That is how come you don't go anywhere. And don't be afraid when they come against you because this name has proven to be more powerful than any other name on this earth. Hallelujah. Amen. In the spiritual realm, wherever they are and they operate, we have power. We have power against them. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, you haven't done this before. Ask using my name and you will receive and you will have abundant joy. Hallelujah. It says, you haven't what? Exercise this authority. That's why you are not seeing abundance in your life. If you know who I am and, and the benefit you derive from me as taking me as your friend, and in my name you can ask anything from the Father, and the Father will give to you. Why you are not seeing abundance in your life is because you don't know how to exercise my name. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray we'll come to that point. To know how to exercise the name of Jesus. To command everything we ever desire according to the will of God for our lives in the mind of Jesus. Every principalities and authors that will come against us. When we mention the name Jesus, they will bow in the name of Jesus. Because we have authority in his name. Another thing the Lord gave us through whom? We are supposed to have authority over spiritual wickedness and powers. It's his blood. He paid the ultimate price on the cross. If you look throughout the Old Testament, God was seeking to walk with Israel. And at any point they disobeyed, they have to sacrifice lamb or some blood has to be poured on the floor or on the altar for God to forgive them their sins. But God came to that point to realize that these are not the quality that he needs 
he's not getting it. So he needed someone who could give him the ultimate sacrifice of sin offering once and for all for all humanity. And that's what Jesus came to do for us. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus came and his blood he shed on the cross became our authority against spiritual darkness and wickedness. Look, we will all die this earth, of this earth. No one can live perpetually on this earth. We will all die. The sinner will die, the righteous will die, the young will die, the old will die. So the question is, as a believer, don't be afraid of death. When you are afraid of death, that is where the enemy will enslave you to do things that will rather cause you not to manifest the glory of God. But Christ came to die on our behalf so that we we'll have life, 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 life and life in abundance. So when the enemy f- try to threaten you with death, you declare that Christ paid the price of death on the cross for me. So I am not afraid to die, but I will live to declare the goodness of the Lord. You speak back to him the benefits you have from your friend. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm praying we'll come to this knowledge and understanding and revelation. Look, throughout the Bible, throughout the Bible, the only single person who runs through Revelation, uh, Genesis to Revelation is Jesus. That is the message of the Bible. So if you say you are a Christian and you are not seeking to understand this Jesus and, and understand the benefits he has for you, then you are just a church who are. But when you come to that point and you see and know and understand who this Jesus is, is to you. You walk confidently, not afraid. Even when you are broke, you know that there is someone who became what? Poor. So that you become rich. When you understand these factors, see, Jesus has been used to do a lot of things in the name of ministry in the name of church, in the name of religion. But if you want to encounter Jesus, know him for yourself, so that you not fall victim to religion. Hallelujah. Amen. When he was leaving, he said what? I leave you with the Holy Spirit. So another authority we have is who? The Holy Spirit. Who causes, he, he, he doesn't sleep, he doesn't do even wherever he's always available. He said, call on me in time of trouble. And he will always be there. Listen, Jesus has paid a great penalty of death on the cross for us. His blood, his name, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. He said, look, I used to be around and I'll be limited. I have to be at this town to perform some miracles before I move to the other town. But now I am going to the Father and I'll make the Holy Spirit. That helped me to do my work on this earth be now available to everyone, not some few people. Not some few people, but for everyone. Whether you are a child or you are an adult, whether you are disabled or not disabled, as long as you are willing to work with me and make you my friend, my Holy Spirit will be made available unto you. Hallelujah. Amen. Christ in us, the hope of glory. We have victory in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Then the word, the word, the word, and fasting. If you want to break through, know how to die in the word. Know how to mind the word. Read the word. Don't read it like a storybook. Don't read it like a history book. Take time and read it. Know it and understand the context in which the word is used. By the power of the Holy Spirit, as you're reading it, you ask God for revelation, for understanding. 
You can read this Bible and it will be like just a normal storybook for you. But you can still take the word of God, uh, the Bible, and be reading. And you are receiving rima, 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 deeper thoughts beyond the ordinary. See, you can take even the same verse and read it over and over again. And you will still have new revelations, new insights. That will work in other aspects of your life. Hallelujah. Amen. I could use the whole year to preach about the benefit of Jesus. Because, hey, there are things he does that religion has not even exposed us to yet. And when you have personal encounter with him and you walk with him faithfully, you see how he helps you to overcome and progress abundantly from one level to the other. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let me move to the last one for today. Jesus is our security. Jesus is our security. Security is the state of being free from danger and threats. Security is the state of being free from danger and threats. See, every now and then, we are going through one challenge or the other. The enemy is bombarding us from all angles, from sickness to scheming issues or challenges that will just defame us, from plotting our financial hardship or, or making us not having wisdom to make the right decision, from making us spend unwisely, from making us make wrong relationship, from making us make things that does not bring glory to God and make progress in our lives. So we keep, we, we keep dwelling within us, looking for fast means and ways to make it in life. So we move from one place to the other, one place to the other, looking for the easiest way to life. See, there's no easy way to life. There's no shortcut to life. Christ could have used the shortcuts to fulfill his assignment, but he used the order God designed from the creation of this earth to fulfill his assignment. He had to be what? Giving birth to a woman on this earth. Two, he has to grow like a baby. Three, he has to be in the assignments of the father as a carpenter. And later on, start preaching the gospel, the higher father assignment has given him. Hallelujah. Look, that is why when, when I talk about career, many people do not understand. When I talk about work, many people understand. You cannot progress on this earth when you do not follow the path that God has predestined for us. Go and say, I will not work, or you work anyhow and see whether you can make it in life. You work throughout your life, even in old age, you'll be seeking to work to sustain yourself. And when you are daily changed with your work, a time comes, you rest from your labor, and God starts start, start taking care of you. Because he makes you become wise with your proceeds whilst you, your life was active. You know how to invest. You know what to do with your money. So that when you are, your health is no more intact, you can what? Enjoy from your labor. Hallelujah. Amen. So, when we don't come to that point to walk with Christ, this friend, I don't know, I, I don't know, but this man called Jesus, when you have him in your life and your heart, you don't have to worry again. Whether you have in your pocket or you don't have in your pocket, you don't have to worry. The question is, Jesus, what can I do to get into my pocket? What I need to survive? Then he says, I've made some provision somewhere. Someone calls you and make sure that the talents or gifts are given to you or your work is being put to work for you to get your daily bread. He says, I am sick. He says, and you are worried. He says, ah, in my name. You can declare healing. So what are you worried about? What is it that you are worried about? The person who can give us security, sound mind, boldness, confidence. 
not the confidence that comes from a massive fiscal wealth, but the confidence that comes from the true room of God, based on your fellowship and work with Christ. That is how come no one can give you confidence, no matter the lectures on confidence you get. The true confidence that comes, or you can possess, comes from working on your path of purpose and destiny too. Having Jesus as the ultimate friend on this earth. So that when challenges come, you know in whom you trust. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's read Proverbs chapter 3, verse 26. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 26. Are we there? Yes. I read. For the Lord is your security. For the Lord is what? Your security. Let me read from 25. Oh, the whole verse. <laughs> Let me read from 23. It says, They keep you safe on your way, and your feet will not stumble. You will go to bed without fear. And you will lie down and sleep soundly. Amen. That is the security that comes as a child of God and Jesus being your friend. You will sleep what? Soundly. <laughs> you will be on bed without fear. The number of people down the night, they do not sleep. When they hear the cockroach move, they say, hey, a thief has come. They are not having sound sleep at night to surprise you. Then during the night, uh, during the day, you see them in flashing attacks, cars, and they are moving. But at night, they have no sleep. But the word of God says what? For you, because you have made me your friend, what will you do? You will go to bed without fear, and you will lie down and sleep soundly. Hallelujah. You need not be afraid of sudden disaster. Hi. When the enemy thinks he wants to bring something on your way to bring you shame right now, you don't have to be afraid. As for the accusation, they will bring it. As for the sudden challenge that will bring you disorder, little it will come. But when it comes, that is where you know that, yes, I have a friend in my boat. And this friend says, you will never leave me nor forsake me. He will never put me to shame. So you declare his word and say, my friend, come and be in my boots for us to overcome this sudden mishap or disaster the enemy wants to bring my way. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, all the destruction that comes upon the wicked. People just have simple headache and they die. But you will go through severe headache, but you survive. Amen. Because you have Christ. In you. Hallelujah. Amen. People go to encounter accidents and they die. You will go to and you survive because there's a mighty hand ah, available for you. Hallelujah. Amen. So we should not be afraid of disaster. When some situation happens, don't go to your closet and cry, oh, maybe oh, I'm dead. My world has come. My enemies will rejoice over me. Oh, my shit. No, 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 no. That is the time to say, hey, you enemy, you wanted to put me to shame. But I, I, I declare that my friend will overcome you so soon and you cannot function to achieve your purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 26. For the Lord is who? Your security. He will keep your foot from being caught. He will keep your foot from being caught in a trap. Hmm? In other words, he will preserve you and protect you from your foot being what? trapped by the enemy. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is your power to help them. That's another portion. But Jesus is what? Our security. He says what? For the Lord is our security. He will keep our foot from what? Being caught in a trap. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's read Psalm 
16 verse 8. Is it security you want? Hey, the person who can give it truly is Jesus. Masu kama suturiani. Psalm 16, verse 8. So it says, I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad and I rejoice. My body rests in safety, Amen. for you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your body, your Holy One, to rot in the grave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You see how God has made available unto us his precious son. And when he was living, he gave us the opportunity to exercise authority in his name. Hallelujah. Amen. In his personality, in his finished work. So he said, is this security you want? Don't worry. <clears throat> I will give it to you in abundance and your heart will be glad. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I move on? Can I move on? Jesus is our healer. Next week, we'll handle Jesus is our healer and others that will help us know that indeed Christ in us is the hope of glory. Amen. And he did not come to leave us as orphans as we walk as Christians on this walk of faith. God says he will never leave us nor forsake us. Whatever we are going through, it is not outside the purview of God. God is very much aware of everything we are going through. Whatever our desire and expectation is, whatever you want to achieve by the end of this year or even by the end of this week, or by the end of next month, God knows it. But he says, by your own might, you can never do it. By your own power and means, you can never achieve it. But come to me. Take me as your friend. Make me your priority on this earth. And let me be the one in control to direct your life and lead it to enjoy abundance beyond your means. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want us to stand up and pray. I want us to stand up and pray and trust God for higher height of this relationship with Christ. I want us to stand up and pray and ask Jesus to be our true friend as we avail ourselves also to let him work in us and be that true friend he always wants to be in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.